Rugby has a two-part game system. 15 on 15 and sevens. Sevens is pretty big now. They have sevens featured in the Olympics now. And I was a sevens player. And I immediately became a great asset in addition to the Florida State rugby team. I My first year, I was All-American. Like number three in the state, a position called winger, which is the fastest position on the field. It's just and right after my second year, we was ranked number two in the nation. Rugby team, the seven, it's not 15s. And also, when I moved to China, to Beijing, I got invited to play in a sevens tournament that's pretty popular called Shanghai Sevens. All the best players get recruited to go over there and compete. And I got recruited to play for our all star team. You can do that. Sad thing was, at the end of the tournament, last game, we won silver. But in that game, I broke my collarbone. What are the name of these shoes? These are Reeboks. It's a special edition. I got them on. All of trucking for a release. Reeboks did a special drop. Collaboration with Amazon. But it was given four or five different um, Reebok sets out. I think they were all under like $65. One set was for human rights, this set for track and field, and I think two other ones, I forget the name. So. Why? Oh, you can add more uh, soap to the brush. Are you big on human rights? Which is a crazy question. <laughs> I'm pretty big on human rights, yeah. They are you tough. Uh, they truth be told, <laughs> my um, freshman year in college, I was really interested in um, activism, especially pertaining to Black Panther. I wanted to be a Black Panther for a while. What attracted you to that structure? Um, just a lot of stuff that I was seeing on TV, how people was treated and the narratives that the government was using to manipulate the masses. It didn't sit right with me. I felt like I needed to do something about it. So many people was struggling and dealing with hardships, but nobody wanted to step up and you know, Defend those people. But, but, I just, about, yeah, Did you run track in high school? Yes, I did. I ran four by one and a two hundred. I was a sprinter. What's exciting about being a sprinter? Uh, probably competing, lining up with some of the fastest in the state. You know, coming from Florida, obviously out of all the states in America, we're the ones that produce mm -hmm. the fastest athletes. During that time, I conducted in crazy training I mean, for Hokie and Okeechobee. Exactly. Running in what 103, 104 weather through sugar cane field chasing rabbits. <laughs> Part of my train. That's that much I always love running. So just that competitive nature. Running with some of the fastest runners in Florida. Fresh. Let's big on that. What does it mean to be from Florida? What does it mean to be from Florida? I mean, to your question. Um, strong willed, determined, a bit cocky, if you will. Um, yeah, right. Good. 
And me being from Fort Lauderdale, I was always on the beach, Fort Lauderdale Beach, downtown Broward, Sunrise. I'm a beach boy. I feel like the culture in Florida, especially South Florida, is just so unique. So unique. Be proud. Left in South Florida. What doors has track opened for you? They're not. Um, they helped me stay fit. Um, it helped me with toughness. Obviously, speed, endurance, stamina. They opened the door for me to get recruited to play rugby for Florida State. Deepwaters. Obviously, football. It helped me to excel in a lot of sports, but it's mainly rugby. Just due to the fact that rugby has a two-part game system. That's right. 15 on 15 and sevens. Sevens is pretty big now. They have sevens featured in the Olympics now. And I was a sevens player. And I immediately became a great asset in addition to the Florida State rugby team. In my first year, I was all American. And that's the point. Blank number three in the state, a position called winger, which is the fastest position on the field. And right after my second year, we was ranked number two in the nation. Rugby team, the seven, it's not 15, so. Yeah. Yeah. And also, when I moved to China, to Beijing, I got invited to play in a sevens tournament that's pretty popular called Shanghai Sevens. All the best players get recruited to go over there and compete. And I got recruited to play for our all star team. You think with that? Sad thing was at the end of the tournament, last game, we won silver. But in that game, I broke my collarbone. I had to get surgery. She won. Explain the game of rugby. Ooh, it should be kind of complicated. Um, main thing, let's just say 15 out of 15. You have, I guess I can try to compare it to American football, offensive line, defensive line. Rugby, you have scrum. And you have a ruck. Pretty much this is tug of war between two opposing teams to fight for possession of the ball and gain momentum. And one of the biggest rules of the game that you have to follow is rugby is a game that's always let off at pace, but the ball has to always be passed backwards. A good example would be um, I don't know how long ago it's been, but Georgia Tech ran a, a offense to where um, it's like a, a double tight full house where the ball was always being ran from the backfield in different directions. Rugby is very similar to that. Sometimes the opposing team that has the ball are making progressions up the field and the scrum half will uh, fly half would kick the ball over the defending team and the fast players like me would go chase it down and if we recover it we gain you know better field position in order to score a try tries are worth five points extra points worth two points that's seven points that's the thing and sevens it's a much faster paced game 
maybe 15 minute, 10, 15 minute halves. 15 is just a little bit longer than that, because obviously that's 15 players. That could be. Um, yeah. My favorite rugby team right now. I like England. All the likes is always good. South Africa is always good. Try nations. I believe I could have went pro, played for the U.S. Eagles team. Probably could have played in this Olympics, but decided to go a different route. Did that? I didn't play much rugby after I recovered from my shoulder. It's my collarbone. How hard is rugby compared to football? <sighs> much harder. Obviously, football, you have protection, you have pads. I mean, nowadays, a lot of players kind of use their pads and use themselves as a weapon, which is unsafe. And football and Roger Goodell are doing their best to amplify, amplify more rules to the game. Um, for protection, you know, they have things like... Um, concussion protocol and whatnot, injury reserve. But in rugby, there's no pads. It's straight body on body. So it's, it's more intense than football is. I think that the biggest uh, down, down point to it is being exposed to rugby at a young age for really catch up to you. That's kind of what I'm going through right now. Just can't go out, and, you know, play a physical sport in the condition that I'm in now compared to what I used to be. Just because I was playing with grown men, freshmen in high school, you know, playing with different men's clubs, competing with them, and guys twice my size. So some of that's starting to catch up to me now. If I don't stay active in a gym, Body starts to get slow. <laughs> but I like I like football and rugby for different reasons. I like the excitement for football, obviously. Um, I like the skill set with running backs, receivers, quarterbacks, especially. Rugby, I like the brotherhood. Yeah. You go hit each other, lay it all out on the field. After you guys go drink at the bar and have fun, <laughs> sing songs. I like the tradition of rugby. And also around this time when I started playing rugby, I watched Invictus. It's a great movie with Matt Damien and Morgan Freeman. I think. About the history of the South African rugby team, which is very inspired coming. Are these your everyday shoe? Uh, these are well on special occasions. <laughs> I wear these on special occasions if I'm gonna go out. I wanna flex and drip a little bit, I wear these. And to be honest, I haven't really wore a Reeboks in a minute. Uh, I used to be a real Re Reebok head when I was a kid. Um, but I just started to wear them again because these are the only edition Reeboks that I would wear. I don't really wear any other type of edition. One of my favorite rappers growing up was Fabulous. And back in high school, Fabulous did a collaboration. He released a line with Reebok. I think Eve did too. Eve and Fabulous both released a Reebok um, shoe. That During that time, it's when I really like one Reeboks. Because Fabulous is one of my favorite rappers of all time. What's the sign of a good Reebok shoe? Good sign. Uh, probably the tongue, obviously the sole, I always like the sole, different designs. I like very simple, I don't like a lot of, you know, colors or 
you no know, different logos like it pretty simple um and it's very light too so it's another thing that did right, this is basic three colors what the sun blue white and lime green pretty simple as a track runner is reebok a good shoe mm, i don't think so I, I think um good track shoe is probably like nike Homer. Some Reebok shoes are okay. They have good um, descriptions with soles, especially the ones that have spikes. They have certain spike designs for Reebok that are pretty cool. But as far as durability and actually running, it could be a, pre a bit heavy at times. But like obviously the main goal when you're running track is you want to try to get cleats dust the lightest okay. on your feet. So, yeah. Did watch it? What are your expectations of a fly shoe? <sighs> Stylish, but simplicity. Like, and very casual. Because this, I literally can wear this with anything. Almost about anything. I don't like, you know, all green shoe, all purple shoe, blue shoe, red shoe. I like, you know, khaki, navy blue, black, gray. I love gray. But I like shoes, especially color designs that can pretty much match with any any type of fit you want to love. I like the, the, the casual, the semi-casual look the best. So yeah. Yeah, so I wear these every once in a while when I go out or I'm kicking it with my people so we're having a good time. And like basic simple colors like these are very easy to wash. And they keep nice and keep yeah. in good shape. I'm not the type to spend 125, 200, 250 dollars on Jordans. I'm straight. Casual simplicity. Is it like shoot cost of under sixty dollars? I ain't tripping. No. Does rugby have a strong Reebok community? Uh, I think so, but it's not as big as some of the other popular brands, obviously, just due towards popularity and sponsorships. Right? Cause there's a lot of rugby clubs, especially universities in America that are sponsored by like Nike, um, Adidas. Adidas is real big. That's um, big. So. They have a nice community, but it's not as popular as some of the bigger, bigger brands. But it doesn't mean they're not good, because obviously they're relevant, so. That's a good thing. All right. So. Hello. So. I've, uh, I've always been a, f a fan of the UK. Always been wanting to visit the UK. I know Reebok is obviously as established in the UK. I think that's another reason why I like them. The sounds are very simple. I remember as a kid, like a high school, foot locker, you know, finish line, foot action. Around my time in high school, there would always be deals where you get two pair of Reebok for like $75. And there'd be a list, uh, not wall, of different collections of Reeboks with like four or five colors. And you can pick two pair for like $65, $75. I will always do that. And during this time, Dickie's, Dickie suits was in style. Tall tees, give me a 3XT, bucket hats, Reeboks. That's what it was. Baggy pants, 
That's what it was. I'll get this to What? Yes, see what's on edges with the face. The other chat. There we go. What does this shoe say about you? I'm hip, I'm cool, chill, low key, relaxed. Um, I ain't gonna say basic, but it's simple, I think. That's a big word. Casual, but simple. Cool. Not trying to be too over the top, but not also, you know, too basic, kind of in the middle. Yeah. I feel like the life expectancy for these are a while. You know, I always keep them up to take great care. How would you say you treat yourself in comparison to your going out shoes? Uh, I think I probably treat my shoes probably better. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I ain't going to say I treat them as pets, but they, uh, I'm, a, I'm a sneakerhead. But I, again, I like simplicity. I like good quality shoe that I ain't got to pay a lot for, but they're very doable. Just to run it. Classics. Uh, now let's do the everyday show. Okay, you need me to move the table, you solid. I'm sick of it. Okay, Vans. What? My favorite shoes in the world. I love Vans. These are my everyday shoes. They're pretty worn. Um, super comfortable, su super durable, extremely light. And yeah, I love Vans, all type of designs. They're real cool. Which one you gonna clean first? Mm -hmm. This one. And me growing up, Vans was always around the same price. Um, normally 45, 50 bucks, no more than that. These cost me, uh, I think, 60. No, these cost me 50. And I got these online. And like I was mentioning before, gray is my favorite color, so I really like these. These are just my everyday shoe. But I have tons of bands. Very affordable. Got my bands all, but they look like sneakers. Yeah, I was really excited when that truck came out. That was around the time I was skateboarding a little bit in high school. My first pair of Vans was the classic Vans, the black and whites, and the black and white with white um, shoe strings. They were the old school Vans. Yeah, really dope. Now they're mad popular, and you know, pop culture, hip hop culture. Everyone's wearing them. They tax them. They're mad expensive now. Just the fact that they were dirt cheap. And I prefer the Vans to have, you know, the thinnest sole, not fat sole, but really thin. I like them all around. It's real thin. That's what makes them so light. And just like, you know, what I was saying about simplicity, Vans normally can rock them with anything. Everybody come up with different, unique concepts and, uh, Outfit designs, sets with Vans. Really good shoe that I can match with a lot of different type of fits, so I like that a lot. What do you look for in a nice pair of Vans? So, obviously, I like um, so it's being really thin, real small. Um, sometimes some vans will have it was the bubble gum sole, 
which will be a brown or a gray, which are really dope, um, that I'll also look for too. But I'm big on the soles and I'm also big on the tongues. It's really slim, literally, really slim and too strong. And color, I like basic colors. Uh, brown, gray, black, don't really, you know, do white too much. I think that's the downside, whether you get white Reebok Classics, white Air Force Ones, white Vans, they're all gonna get dirty fast. So I kinda stay away from white. I prefer brown, gray. You got it's probably do you believe in cleaning the bottom of your shoe? Sometimes I do, outside, with water holes, but inside I don't really clean them. Don't be afraid to clean the bottoms. That's what this table is for. No, get it extra. It's gonna get dirty anyway. This is ain't stuff. This is step on food or something. I really don't watch the bottom. That's in. Yeah, but the main thing I like and I look for in vans is if I'm at a you know a shoe store and I see vans on a rack, I pick them up to check the weight. I want to make sure I like the style of the shoe, the color of the shoe. But other than the importance of the soul, the weight is key. I like the weight. Why is the weight important? Well, I just grew up, like I said, I grew up a runner. Um, I like to be on the go. It's comfortable when you literally just slip these on and you walk out the door. I must feel like you got slippers on. And I love ninjas. I got a few pair of ninja slippers and they feel very similar, so. Was he So like Vans isn't as popular as far as how many stores they have in different locations how they used to be. Obviously of the you know in pop culture and whatnot. But if you not order them online. You're gonna be able to find the good additions in all rounds. And I feel like Van's biggest competitor right now is Converse. I'm not a big, big fan of Converse. I had a few pair growing up, but I probably prefer Vans over Converse. Converse can get very heavy. And since I have a you know, big feet, I wear size 12. Yeah, one Vans make my feet seem small. <laughs> if I wear like Air Forces or Converse, you can tell that, yo, that guy got a big feet, he got big feet. But Vans, they just, oh no, they seem small. They don't seem real big, real long. What do you expect from your everyday shoe? Why a big feet? Some, something that I can be able to match and put it with anything that I wear. Let's say I, I don't really care about, you know, niche matching and putting fits together when I'm going out running errands, that I can just put my everyday shoe on and gotta wait for a night. This. Since these are part sway, I normally would wash these and let them sit by my window out in the sun or under my fan. Since these are sway, the material is a bit different. <laughs> That's another thing, too. If you get vans that are sway and not like the actual material, they're even lighter. <laughs> so, I like those, too. <laughs> I used to be keen on getting different. Color vans and mix matching the shoestrings to match with, let's say, my, my scully or bucket hat or my collar shirt. But back in the day, that was cool. I think that was doing a bit 
bit at the most, but no, I don't even care about it no more. I just get one plain color that match everything. This whole entire shoe is gray. They know the colors. Mm -hmm. It's too wet. It's wet. It's nice, hard and soft. Oh, it's that. No. Some of my favorite type of shoe is Vans. Followed by. I like Adidas. I think I like Adidas a little bit more than Reebok. But yeah, Vans is a shoe that I like a lot. And a different pair of Vans. And I just like the Vans brand in general, not just with shoes, but their clothing brand is pretty cool. What makes the Vans brand cool? Uh, obviously, you know, it, it's the birthplace, uh, the starting point, you know, regarding skateboarding. But just what they represent, you know, a pretty laid back brand. Everything's very affordable. Stylish, you know, any person can buy a pair of bands and fit it to their a custom style, so nobody looks the same. Good I think that's what I like the most. Some people would consider you know, fans as a way of, I guess, a way of life regarding to their fashion. Would you say your everyday shoe has taken you where you need to go? Yes, definitely. With no problems at all. See. Only thing is, like I said with these with Sway, let's say I'm, I'm going out, I'm running errands, and it starts raining. I get home, this is all going to be soaked. So, literally, I'll take this off, put it under the sand, the heater, for it to dry. But, because that's the only downside. If these start to get wet, the water is sitting right like, through to your socks. Feel like you got water boots on. Hey. And when you know you need to go ahead and start, you know, replacing them and getting a new pair, it since the soles are so thin, they'll start to wear down. But you can see right here, yeah, it's much thinner than the front. Yeah. When you start to see this wind down and start to wear, wear and tear, it's time to you know, replace them. Because the soul can only go so far, it start ripping apart. Would you say these shoes have taken you where you need to go in life? Yeah. Me? Yeah. All part of my journey. Part of who I am. Part of my style, my demeanor, my character. But... What does your journey say about you? Mm, that I'm confident, um, simple, easy going, relaxed, low key, and that I do love fashion, but I'm not like a super like fanatic. Normally, at the end of the day, my main focus is to dress to be comfortable, not dress to impress. Even at events where it says that, kind of don't care. Watch it. 
What's one piece of advice you'd give to somebody looking to play rugby? Uh, study the game and watch videos before you actually go to tryouts. Because if you just go to tryouts, you're not going to know what's going on. You want to watch videos to kind of get an idea of how the game is played. Then on top of that, you'll want to find out the position that would match your playing style of what you want to do. Me, it was complete opposite. I literally just went out to try out one time. Saw people tossing around his oval sized ball. Looked it interesting. And I started to play, thinking of the mindset, like smear the queer, whoever has the ball, go ahead and hit him. But that's not how it works. So, my advice is probably get a little bit familiar with the game, basic one-on-one, before you even step on the field. What's one piece of advice you'd give to somebody looking to play football? Probably have a clear mindset about what you want to do as far as your position and your work ethic in the gym. And let it be known that you're a team player and you're not a selfish player. You actually want to help better your team and know that you'll be able to provide for the team with your skill set instead of only thinking about yourself. Okay, did you let go? You gotta have that, that demeanor, that mindset. What? And you gotta be willing to put in the work when people don't tell you nothing about doing it. You gotta take the initiative and do it yourself. You to do me a favor and wipe the table off. That some. This is a day in my shoes. I'm going to. Be-